Okay, so what we've been talking about, though, is communication in relationship because. So, yeah, many a bigger a ballet solution. It's a sign ye to put the sound mess when it's the only day on the Saturday. And of course, we know that Jesus is the word of God. Now, the key issue of Pia begins the car today. No, you're my loser or no good adopt today. So, in a real sense, he was sent to us to communicate God's love to us. The new album, the key issue are. Because without the connection that they had in the Garden of Eden, when they could they walked with God, they lost that connection. And so all through the, the years, the Lord was wanting to reestablish connection with mankind. So in the course of time, Jesus came and represented God's love to us, and he set up a covenant. And it was that new covenant that the, uh, that the prophets had foretold about. And yesterday we talked about a couple of the scriptures that declared about this new covenant. I wonder if anyone, any of the students can recall what the, the special parts of that new covenant would be. Uh, yeah, when we said uh, covenant is the foundation of the relationship between man and God. Oh, hallelujah. That's right. That's right. And the new covenant that the Lord was going to, to uh, establish, and it was actually hundreds of years before Jesus came, the prophets were talking about it. And Ezekiel talked about we would be, receive a heart of flesh and he would remove that heart of stone. And Jeremiah in 30-31-31 said that we would receive um, his spirit within us. Oh, so I was just trying to review where we're going. So today we're going to talk about actually the steps to making a covenant. So I'm going to put my PowerPoint up now, or try to. <laughs> I hope I can. All right. Um. I'm getting better. Oops. All right, how's that? Can you see? Yes, we, we are seeing entering into covenant. Okay, great. Yeah, Jesus and the Lamb. Yeah. Okay, very good. So just very quickly, I wanted to say that the Lord wanted me to say that the reason he has me speaking to you is that he wants you to know how much he loves each one of you. Uh, and we use that word love very loosely, but he says it's such an extravagant love. And he actually said that there's no way that I can overemphasize or, or um, I don't have words 
to even describe how great his love is for each of you students. And this is specifically for you, it's for everyone, but for you, he said, I cannot, speaking to me, he said, you cannot overemphasize, you can't say it's, um, you can't use any words that would be untrue because I don't have words to describe it. And that's so amazing. Hallelujah. And I really believe that this, these two weeks, the real purpose is that you will move into a, a, such a tight relationship, a, a covenant relationship with the Lord. And your connection will be so secure in him by the Holy Spirit. So if you don't remember anything else um, as the time goes by from my talk, from my lesson, I'd like you to remember the look of the, of the shepherd's face here. Because to me, it's pure delight. He's delighting that that lamb came close enough that he could scoop it up and give it a hug. And I just want to share one more kind of picture with you that the Lord showed me one day. We've probably all seen people loving each other so much and they come running, you know, if they haven't seen each other for a while, they'll come running and jump into each other's arms and hug each other. Have you seen that? Well, that's how the Lord wanted me to see myself and Him. You know, I was, I saw myself as a younger person, but I was running with all my might to Him and He, He, you know, I just threw my arms around his neck and he hugged me and he twirled me around. And that really is the kind of love that he has for us. Okay, he delights in you. Hallelujah. So remember this picture. That's how much he delights in you. Hallelujah. So again, the Old Covenant is pretty much the Old Testament, 400 years in between, and then Christ comes and establishes the New Covenant. And of course, everything before the cross was the covenant, and after the cross, it's the new covenant. And all, all the recorded scripture from Genesis all the way to, uh, is it, I'm not sure, is it correct, the, to the New Testament, that all was pointing toward the cross. Uh, and everything then from, you know, Matthew, our, our, what we have recorded through Revelation is the revelation of, the, of this new covenant. Uh, because we know we set up a covenant, we come into covenant with someone, but then after that, we are living the covenant out. And it, we continue as believers to live this covenant out with the Lord. So 
And there's no end to this covenant. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right. So then yesterday we talked about uh, choosing a representative. Whenever there's uh, going to be a covenant made, there needs to be a representative on each side that will um, that represents the people or the tribe that they are representing. And usually you would pick the one, you know, you wanted a good representative of you, one who was trustworthy, who would represent you very well. You know, in our form of government in, our, in the United States, we vote on representatives who then represent us in the government. And we hope that when we send them to our to Washington DC that they will represent us well and they will know our needs and um what we what we want to be you know um established i guess tomorrow it will be near at the diani through maybe we are washing and dc mu people like this for a ballet tomorrow we are low at you to what they get goes up you give us a cool look at it to what they get you to give us a so we don't like that today and some men represent us very well and some not so well but of course, that is very different from entering into a covenant. That was just to show you how you could represent somebody in the government. Because a representative speaks on behalf of the people they represent. But particularly in the in the biblical days, the covenant was not you could not be broken. It could not be broken. So I mentioned yesterday about David and Goliath. Because that's a, a, that is not a covenant between those two men, but they each represented their nation. And the, and the idea was that when they fought, um, what they secured, either winning victory or defeat, everyone that they represented would experience that same victory or defeat. So as we're going to see, Jesus is our representative. The representative had to come from within that family or tribe in order to represent them. He had to be a part of them. And this is really significant. Because when I was younger and people would say, well, Jesus had to die for your sins. He had to come and die. I didn't really know what that meant. But there's a lot of truth in that one simple statement that Jesus had to come and die for your sins. But the king is you are One is that it had to be a man who would die for our sins. And it had to be a perfect man, a sinless, spotless lamb. 
Sabi me so lin e du pia me, a pia me shire du pia me. And as we're going to learn, and we kind of have learned in covenant, it really is a laying down your life for your brothers, for the other covenant members. So in giving his life, he demonstrated his love for all of us, for all mankind. And even now, he represents us before the Father. And we represent him on earth. And by the Holy Spirit, we are one. Hallelujah. So, we'll go ahead. Most of what I'm talking about is not... Um, there are going to be biblical stories that demonstrate these different parts of the different steps of covenant. If that makes sense. A cool but in a cool but in yet she landed down your retina, Uber my beer to my chance. I am my way, my whole boot, the child, Uber my lebby by me. But even though there may be Old Testament stories. I think the Lord will bring to mind perhaps scriptures that describe the new covenant as well. Now being the Mahone, my way, Elo Zalan, each and Jadia, the Gail Brain in the other go to Shabia Yarishi, Miaishi. So sometime during these two weeks, we'll talk more about uh, these steps as they relate to the new covenant. You know, about Dema, the Brain, a sincere, a town, let a tabby tabby or my baby of our man. All right, so the first step of covenant is actually exchanging coats. They would exchange their coats or robes and one give theirs to the other. They would exchange them. To the Hebrew, excuse me, the coat, the robe represented uh, the, the person himself, his coat was represented him, who he was. So when he offered this other person his robe, he was really offering himself. Symbolically, he was really saying, um, I give my life to you. Later on, in another step, they'll talk about the possessions, but right now it just is who, who I am is yours. So let's turn to Samuel, 1 Samuel 18, 1 through 4. So I will I will let the people read. Yes, that would be perfect. Alo payao, no? ကျောင်းပြီးနောက်ကျောလူဤတာယောနတန်စင်းနလုံးဒီတာဝေးစင်နလုံးဒီဒီလူစကက်လျက်ရှိပြီးတာဝေးဘိုနေအမြတ်
So actually we have a, a crown prince here. This was Saul's son, Jonathan, who was in line to be king. And David, we know, was a, a fighting man. He was also a shepherd. So he would have been kind of more ruddy and dirty, perhaps. His clothes would not have been like the robes of a prince. And as you recall, back in uh, Samuel 14, I think, uh, David has already been anointed by Samuel as, as king. He won't be crowned for a while yet until Saul dies, but he has been anointed. Because of Saul's sin, um, God took the kingdom away from him. And Saul knew now there was something really wrong, um, and he just began to hate David, and, and he was very jealous of him. We don't really know what kind of conversation Jonathan and David had at this point. I've always wondered if David would have told Jonathan that he had been anointed, what Samuel had done. And I kind of think that um, they did share that truth. Uh, he loved him as himself. They became one in spirit. I think they must have, David must have related his heart of what had happened, and uh, Saul chose to love him with all his heart. Yeah. Sh shall I repeat that? Oh. Uh, yeah, the last sentence I miss it, it's breaking. Okay. Um, well, I, I think as now as I study covenants, I believe that David and, and, and uh, Jonathan must have had a deep conversation about uh, Samuel having anointed him as king. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like Jonathan doesn't really belong in the house of Saul. Because he chose at this time to take his uh, priestly, or, uh, princely robe from himself and put it on David as though he were even saying, you will be king. So David will be king. It seems like he was submitting, he was submitting to the will of God, submitting to the word that he'd heard that David was anointed. We don't know that for sure. That's just kind of a, a, a thought I have since they, um, since they were so close and they shared their life. I think they would have shared all the truths that they knew about them, each other. So it's almost as though Jonathan was saying, I give you my person, I give you my throne, I give you my... Uh, Opportunity to be king, my kingship. I, he's giving it to David. It's 
it's interesting too that when men would come together like this, they were representing their family. So it within each of them, they were considering their, their children for generations. So Jonathan wasn't just giving up his kingship, but actually the, the kingship of his whole line of descendants. But he actually submitted to the will of God. Jonathan did. That's amazing. And you know that one of the covenants that God made in the Old Testament was to David's, David's family. That there would come one from David's family who would um, sit on the throne and that, that, that kingship would never end, that kingdom would never end. So the first step of covenant is to exchange the robe or the um, coat. The second step of covenant was actually exchanging the weapons. And we actually can see that in uh, the story here that we read uh, in uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel 18. Uh, can't can't quite read it. It looks like in, in verse 4, it says that he took off the robe, and along with that, his tunic, even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Okay, and that belt was, was what held the man's uh, weapons, actually. And a man's weapons and this, this belt actually represented his strength. Each partner pledges to make his strength fully available to the other. And I think as you read through the Bible from now on, especially in the Psalms, every time there's a mention of a weapon, um, especially if God is using it, that would be, that's a picture of the covenant. That is a covenant word. Weapons like sword or um, shield or protect, um, you know, give victory, those are all uh, words that come out of your covenant relationship. So the weapons represent strength, but they also represent protection. Sometimes a covenant partner would, would lay his sword at the feet of the covenant partner, pledging to protect and defend that person unto death. You're kind of saying that if someone attacks you, they'll have to deal with me. My battles are your battles, or your battles are my battles. And your enemies are my enemies. So you're, you're committing your total support for that person when they have a need. And it's interesting that as the prince 
um, I hadn't thought about this before, but I wonder if if Jonathan really had access to um, weaponry and even men who would help him defend David. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay. So number three. So okay. So number one was the exchange of coats or robes. Number two is the uh, exchange of weapons. Yeah. Number three. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. But I'm not the Chaga Valley, will own Leme, Judia the Chaga or Lena Leme. Now the other Chaga. So the next step is actually the cutting of the covenant animal. Ara Balasui, Bedinian Tatawagu, Li Piacino for it. And the word covenant in the Old Testament is Berith, B E R I T H. The Bedinian Thres Longo, the Mahonchano, Beric Lu, Phone Nebona, he bears Loma. And it's sort of that word has the understanding that it is a blood, a blood covenant, and it has to do with cutting. Both those words are in that word, cutting and blood covenant. Cutting and blood covenant are in that word covenant. Yeah, in the Old Testament, that word berith, berith yeah. actually berith has berith. has the under. Yeah, it has the understanding. I'm sorry. Okay, although there's a cutting of an animal, this particular way that an animal was cut wasn't the way of, like a sacrifice was offered at the tabernacle. This is very different. When an animal was being sacrificed as an offering, um, it was the, the the throat was usually slit and the blood, you know, was came out and then they they roasted the animal or something. But this is different. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the next step is um, actually cutting the covenant animal, cutting the covenant. In fact, they don't even say cutting the covenant animal, they would say cutting the covenant, and everyone knew that meant the animal was being cut or sacrificed. Okay. To cut the blood covenant, um, an animal is actually killed and cut down the middle all the way down and opened up to two sides. It had two, two halves. Yeah. And the two halves were then laid um, opposite each other. And then the two representatives would walk in a figure eight around those two pieces, the two pieces of carcass. They would walk around in a figure eight. So now, leave your idea, a chan a chan a lema, bring your poor lunia or lamp your shower. And this is called walking the path of death. You're actually walking into the death of the animal and through his blood. You're walking into his death. So it's at this uh, point as they're walking that they're actually declaring uh, the terms and the promises um, that they're making to the they're actually declaring what they're going to give and what they're going to receive. So even as we see blessings and curses in the covenants that God has made, there are blessings and curses uh, connected to this covenant. So they would actually say, you know, may your family be blessed, may your crops be blessed, may, you know, everything you do be blessed. 
But if you break this covenant, may you become like this animal that we're walking through. Because the blood covenant was unto death. And if you broke the covenant, legally, you could face death. You have someone who's promised everything they are and everything they have to you, and it's um, before God, it's expected that you will keep that covenant, you know, until you die. So sometimes they would even say, I promise you all these things, even if it kills me. <laughs> it sounds funny. You know, you will keep the covenant even if it kills me. It sounds funny when they say it, but... Um, yeah. All right, so that was step number three, the cutting the covenant. Oh, number, and it is a bloody, it is a bloody, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, experience. It is bloody. Hey, sometimes I think the terms of the covenant should be first before the cutting, but it's usually listed after the cutting of it, after the, you know, the, the bloody walk. Um, Again, this is kind of a modern picture, so this is probably not what a very good picture to use, but um, <laughs> it's the terms of the covenant. So I have a picture also of a ketubah, of the ketubah that the, uh, the Jewish people use in their marriage. So this is the terms and covenant of their marriage. And of course, a marriage isn't a blood covenant, but it does involve a commitment and a, um, a promises. Captain. I guess it is a blood covenant, but you don't, you know, <laughs> never mind. Okay, um, it's a little different. It's different than this ancient kind of covenant. Okay, so the terms of the covenant then were given. Each one would, would speak the terms that they had come up with. Both parties with the co with, of the covenant would stand before a witness, and I think that could be God, and list all their assets and, abil and liabilities. They list all their assets and liabilities. So you might say, I have 12,000 sheep and 20,000 uh, goats, and you know they would actually list their assets. You'd also list your debts, and that person would then be willing to take on your debt for you. So, prob you know, as we're learning about this, it makes us think of what it's, when we talk about the debt we owed, because of our broken covenant with God, of the debt we owe Jesus paid. So when Jesus made the covenant with us, he knew we had this huge debt that he would have to pay. And of course, the only payment that could buy us back from the enemy was his very life. So sometimes we say, oh, we owed a debt we couldn't pay, 
Jesus paid a debt we that we well Jesus paid the debt we we owed. Is that how it goes? I can't remember. <laughs> um, Jesus paid the debt that. Oh, never mind. That was it's a little saying, but I I don't have it written down. Anyway, okay. So what you're saying basically is everything that I have is yours, and everything you have is mine. In this way, if something should happen to you, your wife and children will be taken care of. So it's actually an assurance for the family as well. Also, if I become rich, you will share in my wealth. If I become poor, you will help me. And it makes me think of the psalm, you know, he owns a cattle on a thousand hills, the wealth in every mine. Have you, have you ever sung that? I think it's a song. I think it, the, the idea is from a psalm. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. A cattle on a thousand hills? The cattle, um, the ant, he, he owns everything, and that, that, those, that's also ours, and we actually own it. Yeah, and it makes me think of the psalm, uh, they would list the blessings that they could expect if they kept the covenant. And also the curses that would come upon them if they broke the covenant. So this may bring to mind all in the Old Testament, you hear about the curses and the blessings, but that's why, because it's a covenant that, he's, that God has established. So that's the terms of the covenant that were established. So next came actually the mingling of blood. I'm not sure this this may actually have taken place when actually standing in that bloody walk. I'm not sure if this all happened at one time or not, but perhaps it did. So we know that the that the life is in the blood. God has told us that. So the blood in the Bible and really most cultures, blood symbolizes life. So a covenant symbolizes taking in the blood of another and thereby acquiring that person's life. In this way, two unrelated people, two people who are not related by blood, become one flesh and blood. So the two partners would cut their either their wrist or perhaps a part of their palm, and then they'd hold them together and let their blood mingle. So I always thought uh, before I studied covenants that that would be wrong, that God would be un not pleased if you mingled your blood like that. I thought that would be wrong. But we're told not to drink the blood, not to eat the blood, but this is a little bit, this is a different kind of situation. So this is called the mingling of blood. The blood flowed as one. one person. 
And it's believed that actually the handshake that we do today, or not during COVID, but the handshake actually originated from this idea of a covenant. All right. Um, so again, the idea is we are becoming one with each other. Uh, a lot of times there are, like in our cities, in our country, some of the big cities, there are gangs that actually form these covenant, these blood covenants together. And that really is unto death. And you have to be willing to die for your partner, you know. Um, that's why often when the police would bring in one of their gang members, he knew that if um, told on them, they would kill him. He'd die because he broke his covenant. Uh, the gang members would kill him when he, if he got back out. Mm, I, I, I'm confused. Would you please tell Okay, me? so if... Um, if there are the gang members say one got caught by the police and they brought him in for questioning and they said who else did this with you who are you with who are the, who else is guilty if he we call it ratted if he gave the names of his covenant brothers they would kill him when he got back out because he broke his covenant <laughs> All right, so that's mingling of blood. Number six is actually an exchange of names or name changes. Uh, number number three is cutting the covenant. Number four. Oh, did I miss one? Number four. Yeah, I think so. Uh oh. <laughs> number four, terms and condition. Am I right? Oh, no. um, let me see. Let's go through it again. Number one is the exchange of coats. Number two is the exchange of weapons. Number three is the cutting of the covenant. Yeah, number three. The animal, animal actually. Mm -hmm. Oh, I am missing. So four is the hand is the handshake or the mingling of blood. I'm sorry, sometimes the computer takes one of my numbers off. I don't know why. <laughs> right, so this is the number five, right? All right, so this is the exchange of names. And each partner takes part of the other's name and incorporates it into their own name. You probably remember several people in the Bible when the God renamed, he gave them a new name when he was forming a covenant with them. We know Jacob became Israel. And here we have Abraham, Abram and Sarai, and um, we'll talk about how God changed their names. So the Lord established his covenant with Abram. And, um, and he changed his name from Abram to Abraham. And he changed his wife. Sarai to become Sarah. And what God did was he put the sound of, of uh, the, the, it's actually the H sound from his name, from Yahweh. He put that sound into Abraham and into Sarah's name. And to the to the uh, Hebrew, that was actually the breath of life. That ha, huh, that was the breath of life that God blew into them. Yeah, we bow. We, hey, lead them on. Hey, how them bow? Ah, a third, a third lead through a day. Be a kid. 
And the beautiful part of this adding this breath of life, we know that Jesus also breathed in his disciples the, his breath when he set up the covenant with them. And of course, in Genesis, when God created Adam, he, he breathed into him the breath of life. And the word life actually is a covenant term. Because it means that two people are dying to their old life and they're coming together to form one new life. So when you see life, the word life in the in the scriptures is actually talking about covenant life. It's 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 a covenant term. What I find really amazing is that not only did God change the names of Abraham and Sarah, but he also changed his name. He actually changed, from this point on, he was actually known as the God of Abraham. So he was not ashamed to be associated with a man. God associated himself with a man. And we know even in, the, even in the New Testament when it says that Jesus isn't ashamed to call us brothers. You know, again, that is he wanted to identify with us he, because of his love. He knows we're not perfect, you know, but he wanted to identify in covenant. So even in marriage, um, in the United States at least, the woman usually takes on the, the man's last name as her own. Uh, do you do that in your country at all or not really? No, do. Okay. So this probably is because our nation is established on Christian, you know, um, and Old Testament Mosaic law policies. That's probably why we do that. So from the time I got, was married and my name changed, I was totally identified as Bob Sage's wife. We were one. We were one uh, unit now. And all that he had was mine. <laughs> so I loved when we got married, um, before we got married, Bob had already changed his checking account to have my name on it. Yeah, before you got married, you have a checking account. Well, we each had our own. I didn't have very much money in mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Bob had a lot of money. Yeah, you mean like... He put my name on his checks. Oh. See, I'm right. Let's have a son. Let me tell you, my mom, no? I believe call it. See, I'm Bob, yeah. He tell him I see him on a pan, pan, see him on a lemon. I'm not see my name. You tell me like that. See, I'm right. I'm not going to see you. I'm going to do a million dollars. Let's have a light day. No, no. So, so all he got was me. <laughs> Not much money. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, let me see. So marriage is the most basic covenant in our world today. But I've heard that there are some some countries, some cultures that still put a little cut on the both the bride and the groom, and their blood runs together. Be, you know, in, in symbolizing they're becoming one. 
Alright, so we're going to move on to number six. Yeah. You know what, I'm missing a picture. That's why I'm, I'm out of, um, I'll go back to this one. Okay, because this is actually a scar. There's always a scar that would represent um, the covenant. So the scar or some identifying mark was made on the body. And the scar was the outward evidence of the covenant that others could see. And they would know that there was a covenant that had been made. Sometimes they would rub a substance of powder into that scar to make it even be uh, darker or a bit larger. It would heal up very large. And that had several purposes, actually. So every day when you saw the scar, you remembered, I have this person that I love, that I, I am called to be faithful to. But also in the public square or out in public, people would see your scar, they would know that person has a covenant partner, and I don't know how big they are, you know, so I will treat them, you know, respectfully. So if someone was threatening you, you could show the scar, and they'd know that they'd also have to fight this guy, you know, so I don't know if this is true, but the American, um, the Native Americans in our in our land, would always say how, and they would put their hand up, and people wonder if if they didn't have uh, co their covenant markings here. What other tribes would support them if they were ever in war or a battle? We know that in our country, at least, the gangs that, that make covenants together use tattoos to identify them. So sometimes if they would see each other, they were opposing gangs, they would see each other in the city and they would, they would know this is my enemy. I don't know what they would do, but you know, that was always a, uh, what's so funny, David? <laughs> Why? I don't know. One of the students has tattoo, so I, I realized. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not bad. Yeah, it's you not know, bad. tattoo. I mean, necessarily, it just means that sometimes you identify with a group when you have a tattoo. We'll all get the same tattoo. Okay, very good. All right, so number seven is they would always have a covenant meal um, to celebrate their, their uh, covenant. The roasted an the sacrificed animal could be roasted for this meal and other things could be eaten as well. But the meal would always involve the breaking of bread and a cup of wine. So when I first started studying covenants, I was really surprised to learn that Jesus wasn't the first one to have a covenant meal with his disciples. I thought Jesus... 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, you, yeah you, you tell, yeah, thank you. you I on. thought, I thought Jesus was the one who, who made up that, who made up that last supper with the bread and the wine. I never realized the history of it. I thought he was like, that was his own idea at that time. And maybe it was, but I mean, I thought he was the first person to ever have that kind of meal um, with bread and, and Wine. But then we find out it had been done really since probably Genesis, the first, you know, forever. It had been done from, from uh, ages ago. Ages. Okay, wine symbolized joy to the Hebrew. So grape juice, I'm just going to say this, grape juice sours, but wine, like true love, improves with time. So grape juice sours, it turns sour. But wine, like true love, improves with time. Mm. Mm. Uh, the they would often drink their wine with their arms intertwined. How do you say it? You know how they do, people would, you know, put their arms uh, through each other and actually drink their wine that way. Um, and then actually say, as, and even when they feed each other, they would feed each other the bread. And while they're eating it, they're saying, this is my body, I, I am now giving it to you. And they would say, this is my blood, which is now your blood. We are now blood brothers. And they so from two, we become one. We are now one. So again, we'll talk more later about um, the Lord's Supper, the, the memorial meal he had when he established his covenant. But until then, I'm allowing, we just need to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal these truths to us, that there, there's more to it than we ever knew. I think sometimes Christians come to the Lord's table full of guilt and shame, and they feel like they're, they don't deserve to be here, and they're almost afraid to come. But once we know about the covenant, we know the only reason we can come is because of this covenant, this eternal covenant God has made that makes us one with him. We come in because of the blood of Jesus. I mean, we, we do need to come, um, and we, how do I say, we may need to clear the air sometimes and uh, repent of certain things, but it really can be a time of joy and rejoicing in him and his covenant. All right. So number eight is a memorial. There's some kind of memorial was established. Um, there was some kind of witness, a sign, or memorial that they would use to remember their covenant. Um, 
Um, and sometimes they, they would heap these stones and these weren't little pebbles. These were huge stones that would be there for many, maybe thousands of years. They're not little teeny stones. So every time that person walked by that, that pile of stones, they would remember the covenant. It was a memorial. And even as they're in future generations, when their grandchildren walked by, they'd say that's when grandpa made the covenant with this other tribe. They would remember that covenant. Sometimes they planted a tree. Uh, which was also another uh, sign or memorial of a covenant. Um, I should say sometimes the animal, the, the blood of the animal would be would be sprinkled on the stones. It, I don't know why, but sometimes they would do that too. Uh, so David, yeah, I don't. I don't know why I'm not ending up with nine. Maybe I only have eight steps. Mm. Oh, I know. Just a second. Maybe I can find it. Um. Excuse me. I'll be right back. If you give a test on this, I feel bad because I only. I don't have all Is nine. Time um, okay. What was that? Is it terms and condition? Say that one more time. Terms and condition. Yeah. Oh, did I not count that? You didn't count that. Okay. I've the computer took one of my numbers off. Okay, thank you. So there are nine then, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, covenant Yeah, I'm missing one, but anyway, those eight are the primary ones. I I think when I I do have a listing of them though, but I oh here it is. Times and conditions. Okay, so covenant is one of the number. Terms. Okay, I have ten. Co covenant term. Terms and condition. Yes, we. I did count. Um, you didn't count that, yeah. Uh, you you counted the taking of the road, exchanging road, exchanging weapons, cutting the covenant, and uh, mingling, mingling of blood, the blood, changes of name, and making a scar, and you miss uh, to count the the covenant terms and then okay. eat a memorial and, then memor and the making a establishing a memorial. Okay, great. Thank you. That is that's right. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah see, all right. We have a little goes in here, no? All right, we have a few more minutes. I want to talk about um the threshold covenant, which I don't know how you can differentiate, you know, covenants the people back then would have, but there's a specific Threshold covenant. I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit about. Okay, the threshold. Oh. Yeah. The threshold covenant is is a little bit specific, and this may actually be how they did regular covenants. I don't know. Oh. Uh, uh, you born at the only down a brain your point, met the car coma, the two point like the damo, see that in my poor, la, see the easy door, or pop yara, one or chance about I met Luchansa, my the car company, so I see the Sia Uta than the car coma, but I don't know, and I don't think I win one money. Yes. Okay, um, so tomorrow or the next day we'll get into talking about when the, when the uh, Israelites came out of Egypt and they were told to, uh, Sacrifice an animal, a lamb, right at the, their threshold, right at their door.
And it seems like that's the kind of covenant that this threshold covenant is. Okay, the threshold is actually, did you tell them, is that the place where you step as you walk into a house? And this is actually an ancient temple. This isn't a home. This would be this is some kind of temple, but that's a good picture of the threshold. Only he's stepping on the threshold and he's not supposed to. <laughs> But the reason I, I, I like this picture is it shows the basin, it shows that bowl that's carved into the threshold. Uh, so did you mention about the blood that that's where they put the blood for a sacrifice? Not yet. Okay. Okay, so if an animal would be sacrificed at the threshold, they would put the blood in the basin. Some people think it means they were holding a bowl, they put the base the blood in, but this is actually called a basin or a threshold. So perhaps this was where they would put the blood of the sacrifice as well. ဟုတ်တို့ပြီးအညွန်နဲ့လေယူပြီးတော့ပြီးတခါထုတ်တခါတိုင်းနေပါတော့ပြမှာလားအဲ့ဒါအင်ဒုံလက်ကနေကို
many believe is actually where they would have put the blood of a, of a covenant yeah. and then they would step over it. They would never step on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so guests in ancient times, uh, guests entered through the door and thieves or those who meant harm would never enter a doorway. They would always come through a window uh, because there was a real curse on anyone who entered your home through your door and meant harm to you. It was like a, a curse. So, so if you stepped over the the threshold into someone's home, it was assumed that you meant good for them. You were you were almost like a, a brother. You know, when you slept with someone, when you had supper or dinner, you were considered a almost like a friend. It was a, a simple kind of covenant. All right. Um, so often, often when you had a guest at your home, you would sacrifice um, an animal just to honor them. And then you would enter in and, and enjoy fellowship. Um, okay, let me see. Oh, oh, okay. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't put the rest of the pictures on. Okay, tomorrow I will show you the picture of the Israelites um, as they are putting their the blood on their doorposts for the covenant that God called them to in Passover. I could bring it up now, but I'm afraid I might lose lose everything. <laughs> I won't be able to do it right. Um, and I guess I, I really love the idea of this covenant because we know that the when God told them to put the blood on their doorposts, and that would identify them, and the death angel would pass over them. That would be the way they were identified as being in covenant with God. Um, let me see. So actually, we'll look at this again tomorrow, but in, in Exodus, it actually says um, that the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. So this kind of gives me a different picture. Again, I don't know this for sure, but I feel like as I studied covenants, that the death angel did see the covenant and passed over them, but God also passed over that threshold and went in and covenanted with them, with each family who was, had the blood on their doorpost. So they were actually making a covenant with God. It was a simple covenant. It's not one we meant we talk about a lot, but even then, that was the beginning of the covenant that God would give. The terms of the covenant will come on Mount Sinai. But right now, this is the cutting of the covenant and the blood applied. Um, mm. You know, it didn't all happen in one day, and exact actually. But here's the cutting. This is one one step. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll actually cover that a little bit more in, on another day, but um, it looks like it's 10 o'clock. So I, 
Does it seem clear? Is this good? Hello, <laughs> Shinyala. Uh, so I, I will stop screen sharing. Is it okay? And to yes, thank you. The faces. Yeah. So Alun Bilule Shinyala. Let's see what we are doing. Ah, Shinyala, ตําสังคอนดิชั่นเนี่ยอฉิดอยู่อธิจารีပြောလို့ရမလားတော့ตําสังคอนดิชั่นเนี่ยตะคุตะคานเนี่ยตะคานเนี่ยไม่ช่ว
And also the scripture, forget not all his benefits. Those benefits are the part of the covenant, you know, that they, they, they saw it as a good thing. They had this covenant with God, you know, we, he's our God. And the Gentile was actually those who had no covenant. We were without covenant. So to think that, you know, the, the creator of the universe was, they could say is my God. That was a very powerful thing. And it was in their terms that I will be your God. You'll be my people. So that was even part of the terms that, um, you know, they were owned by God. That might be interesting as they're reading in, in the coming days, they'll, they'll begin to see, oh, that's a term and condition. There aren't as many conditions on the new covenant because it's really in Christ's blood and we received his righteousness, <laughs> you know, but we do need to stay close. We are walking in covenant. We are one with him. And um, yeah. so it's really a matter of relationship now. Yeah, anyway, this, this <laughs> is plus. <laughs> And this is where many churches begin to disagree with what is required, what are the requirements of salvation, you know, what do you really have to do? And um, so there is a lot of disparity, and I, I don't really want to ever um, think I know exactly what this all means, but I think as we walk in the Spirit, He will lead us in, into truth. The truth about these. <laughs> <laughs> so we love you. you. Thank you so much. So oh, I will take a picture. All right. I love all of you. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to take a picture. Yeah, one, two, three. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, video point in the show report. No, yeah, I know. Yoke party. Go ahead, Chomo Lapari. Yes, all you are. Oh, yeah, you know. One, two, three. Yai B. Okay. Ah, so yeah. อ่าลินดาวอ่าลงนุ๊กแซวเนาะปิ่นจันเนี่ยไม่สวยเลยจังนุ๊กแซจริงๆจันเนี่ยไม่สวยขนาดนี้แกพี่บ่าเนาะแ
ကိုတခုတွေ့လို့စိတ်ဝင်စာရင်ကလန်ဒေါ်တွေမှာတခါတွေရေးပြီးပါကျွန်တော်ဘလူကိုတခလေးကြရင်အဲ့ဒီအော